Hello and my name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP specialized in SharePoint. In today's video we are going to discuss how to create SharePoint online subsite programmatically using PowerShell, REST API and C some client side object model. If you miss my yesterday's video, I'll put the link in the video description. You can have a look at that. There I have explained what is a subsite, how to create subsite of using the browser how to delete subsite so those i have explained um, also i have explained what is the difference between a site and subsite so you can have a look at that now today we will basically see uh, how we can create Serp serpent subsite uh, in serpent online using powershell and uh, using rest api and also we will see how we can create subsite using client side object model or csum now let me open and we will go through that we will first see how we can create this using SharePoint Online PowerShell. So I will open PowerShell IAC, uh, PowerShell IAC I usually use for running any PowerShell script uh, on this environment or on this system. So uh, also I have explained what is PowerShell IAC, how we can work with that I will put the video link in this one in the video description so uh, let me explain you uh, so how we can create this using powershell create a subsite using powershell and we'll run this code and we will see uh, whether the subsite is getting created or not now here we will use microsoft.sharepoint.client.dll so make sure that your dlls are there somewhere you have you, you can refer it uh, if you if you are using a window 10 machine or something then you can install sharepoint online uh, manage uh, client side sdk client management sdk basically and uh, then you, you will have this url on this particular path and once you have this then you can run this command because this commands are this dlls are required to work with uh, csum with powershell now you can see here i have a variable which will tell that this is going to be my serpent site and order this site we are going to create a, a sub site now get the context so you can see here this is how we can get the context by using the client context class and you can pass the site url and then the credential so uh, basically it will when you will work with SharePoint online site if you want to connect it to SharePoint online site from PowerShell then it will require a username and password so here this will it will ask for the username and password once you enter it then the, you will get that context now uh, we can use web creation information class which will take uh, the parameters so basically if you'll see in the browser when you are creating it, it will ask you to provide the site title uh, the description the template and the URL so here also we are doing the same thing so if you we'll look at it so I am passing the title uh, the description the template and the URL um, so the template I am using here is STS hype uh, you can see has three so this one is for a SharePoint online modern site without an office 365 group if you will give uh, STS hype uh, uh, has zero then it will be a modern team site and you can see here then uh, context.web.webs so it will give you all the webs dot add method will take this parameter you can see here so I pass this parameter and then finally will call the execute query method and once you have the execute query method then it will actually create it so i'll just copy it and then i'll paste it here so this is my sharepoint site so let me run it so once you once you run it it will ask you for the credential so let me put the credential so i put the credential i'll click on ok so once you click on ok um, it will take some time and then it will create this so you can see here now this one executed successfully i'll go to the this site and then we will see whether the subsite got created or so if you'll open the site okay in case you are interested for SharePoint development training then you can check out this SharePoint development training course it's a complete course which is having 23 modules and there is uh, there's more than 60 plus hours of HD video course on that and you'll get a lifetime access so you can get everything on this URL so you can also uh, see the entire course module module wise everything so you can have a look at that I'll put the uh, link in the video description now let me open this site so you can see here this is our sp guide site you can see and if i'll go to the site content page from on the left side then you can see here there's sub site so if i'll click on the sub site tab then you can see here sharepoint training and this is a sharepoint training site this is what we created it so uh, now this is how we can create using the powershell so 
uh, I will put the PowerShell script in the this article that I wrote completely. You can see here this is the article that I wrote, and here you will get everything. So all this code script everything is there. So whatever we are going to use this today, you will get everything on this article. So I'll put the link in the video description. Now we will see how we can use using the REST API. Now. Uh, again for the rest api what is rest api how we can use it all this i have created videos and i'll put the link on the video description also you can have a look at that now what i we are going to do here is we will create a form where a user will enter the subsite title the subsite url and the subsite description and then we will create this subsite so if you'll see here now uh, this is the html form you can see um, so we uh, simply i am taking the input type text uh, each control has an id so that we can get the value and then you can see there is a size also 40 so then i have a button so you can see here button and then this is the text which will appear in the button and then uh, we require jquery so i gave the jquery reference so you can give it from the cdn or you can even you can download the jquery file put in a site asset library and then you can give that path here and then this is the button click so we are calling on that in the button click uh, what we are doing here is i'm trying to retrieve all the values so if you'll see here dollar then you can pass the control id dot value and then it will actually give you the value so whatever user will enter in the title url and description you will get that and then the URL. So to add a website, uh, to add a subsite. So you can see here we can use underscore API web web info slash add. So this is the rest endpoint. So this will give you the current site URL, and this is going to give you the endpoint. And then uh, you can see here we are doing the AJAX call here. So the important thing that we are doing here is we are passing the parameters here. Anyway, this is going to be a post call, but the parameters that we are uh, passing here is you can see here underscore underscore metadata. The type is sp dot wave info creation information. And you remember in PowerShell also we are using the same class. Here we are passing the URL, title, description, language, web template. It is sts hyphen three, so you can put as sts hyphen zero as. Now, since we don't want uh, to use any unique permission, so you can make that property as false. And then this is the header, so accept and content type. This is what we require if you are doing a post operation. So x hyphen request adjust value, and this is what we need to pass it. And on success, it will give you a successful message. And on failure, then it will give the error. So this is the complete code for the REST API. So what I'll do is I will just copy this code, and we will go here. Uh, maybe we'll go to this one. So this is TSN for classic site. You can see here, and there is a web part page on this. So I'll go to edit page. You can see here, and once the page it page is in edit mode, click on add a web part, and then finally we will select a script editor web part. So I'll go to media and content, then script editor web part. Click on add. So once you click on add, you can see here edit snippet is there. Just paste it the code and click on insert stop editing this page so now if you look at this what we are doing here is the form so you can see our form is there enter subtitle uh, subset title url and description so i will give human resource and here i'll give hr and this is an hr site or hr subsite so once you do this click on create subsite using rest api so the code will execute and then once the site got created successfully you can see the message sharepoint subsite created successfully now go back to the site you can see here this is our site i will go to the site content so that we can see and if we'll scroll down if we'll go to the subsite you can see here human resource and if you we'll click on that actually you can see this is a subsite um, modern subsite without office 365 group connected in, into it so this is how we can use the REST API to uh, create a subsite in, in a SharePoint site. The last one we will do is we, we will use CSUM. Now to use CSUM, we require two things. One thing is you require Visual Studio for that and then you can or we need the DLLs. So if you have not installed Visual Studio, then you can uh, download and install Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. That's a free uh, edition as for the development purpose. You can use that. 
and I have installed it. So what I'll do is I will just show you how we can start it and then uh, then we will see how we can uh, you know, how we can create this. So if you'll see here I'll run as administrator and I'll say yes and you can see here now the Visual Studio uh, 2019 is loading. So what we'll do here is we'll create a Windows application. So you can create Windows application, you can create console application, everything you can do that. And now, um, so this is the 2019 version, you can see here, I'll say create a new project and it will actually show us the project templates that we can use uh, to create uh, a Windows application. So you can see here, this is the recent template I have used or you can scroll down and you can see the Windows Forms uh, app uh, template or you can even search it here. So I'll just select this and I'll click on next. So once you click on next, it will ask this thing. I'm not changing the name and everything, let it be. And then I'll click on create. So once you click on create, um, then you will see that the Windows application will got created and we need to add our DLLs at the at the beginning. So you can see here, this is how a Windows application looks like. You will have a form over there. And here you can go to the reference and you can add the reference here. So to work with uh, uh, the SharePoint client object model or the CSM, we require microsoft.sharepoint.client.dll and microsoft.sharepoint.client.runtime.dll. These two DLLs are required. So uh, I'll go to the reference. You have two options. You can go to the NuGet package and you can do that. The other way is you, if you have installed SharePoint online client uh, SDK, then you will, you will have the DLL on that path, which I uh, explained to you before. So I'll click on add reference. And once you click on add reference, you can go to browse and then actually you can browse to the DLL. So let me put the path here. So you can see here, I put this path. So this is the complete path uh, if you have installed uh, SDK. Now I will select those two DLLs. So one thing is the microsoft.sharepoint.client.dll and the other one is microsoft.sharepoint.client.runtime.dll. These two DLLs are there and then click on add and then click on OK. So once you have these two DLLs, then we can actually use the classes over here. Uh, then what you have to do is, you we need to design a form. So you can go through the uh, uh, all Windows form control and you can see here, I'll take a label here and you can see here, I'll put the label here and then similarly, I will take the text box here. So you can see here, this is the text box and you can see like this, you can design your form. So basically you can go here and you can rename it. For example, I will give a subsite, subsite name like this. So you can see here, this is how the subsite name and then you can also change this. So what I have done is I have designed this form because I don't want to waste the time on this. So I've designed this form and this is how we can design it. I'll show you in, in the other form and then we will see from there how we can run it. So if I will open that, so you can see here, this is the form and uh, let me open this form. So you can see here, this is actually the form here. So I have put a label here. So you can see here, these are all labels. So this is left side one, all the labels. These are the text boxes and here is the button. So title, URL, description and template. So we put four text boxes and then there is a button. And you can double click on that button which will take you the code file where actually you can write the code. Now this is a simple, pretty simple code. So you can see here, I, uh, you are, first of all, you need to take the context. We need to get the context here. So put the site URL and then context. Next you can see here, um, this authentication mode. So it's the default and then credential. Now, since we are trying to connect to a SharePoint online uh, site, then you can see here, um, there is the credential I'm passing here. So you can see here the username and then get SPO uh, string, uh, uh, secure string password. That's the method that we are using. And if I'll open that method, you can see here, this is what is the method uh, which will actually return a secure string. So that because this, this one is expecting a secure string. So this is what we are, uh, this method will give it. So you have your, uh, uh, you have your username and password. And then we are using the web creation information. This is the same class that we are using to create a subsite. You can see here I'm passing the title. Title will be the text box title dot text. So whatever user will enter in the title text box. And similarly, there is a URL which will come from the URL text box. And then there is description which will come from the description 
and then the web template which will come from the web template text box and then finally you can see here context.web.webs.add and then we are passing this object and then execute query once you run the execute query or once you execute one this this uh, command will execute or this line of code will execute then it will create the subsite on this under this particular site which is ts info classic sharepoint and you can see here then finally we are displaying a message here you can modify this code you can put a try catch block where you in the exception you can you can take the message you can display to the user but just for the video i just took the code which will which will execute correctly uh, if you are, if, and it will display the message so now you can click on the start button so it will actually open the form now where we can enter the values on this so you can see here it will open now it will just take some time and then it will open it so this is how the forms looks like so i can put uh, the details here so i'll say marketing team site and then i'll put uh, the URL will be simply marketing and then the description this is a team site for marketing and the last one you can see here STS I will put the template so in this case I'll put the template 0 so that it will create a classic team site and click on create SharePoint shop site and this code will execute and then finally it will display us the message that uh, the site has been created successfully so you can see here the SharePoint online subsite created successfully so let me go back here we will go to the site content page you can see here this is the same TS info classic site content page I will just refresh and then you can see here this is the marketing team site if you we'll click on that you can see here this is the marketing team site this is the site title and this is the url is marketing because we just gave the marketing the site url and this is how we can create a sub site uh, for a under a particular site uh, using csa so if you like the videos kindly subscribe to the channel you will get a lot of free videos on sharepoint office 365 all these programming things power platform spfx all these videos you will get for free so like the channel and subscribe to the channel thank you and have a nice day